Hello everyone, this is Abby Jo and welcome to my cottage kitchen. I'm going to be showing you two ways to make pie crust today with our hands and a bowl, real simple, and with a food processor. And then I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite cream pie recipes. Pies are such a special thing to make during the holidays. That's usually when I make them is during a holiday or a birthday or some kind of special occasion. And I've had so many people tell me they just can't make pie. And that's why I want to make this video to show you how to make pie crust very simply and how to make delicious cream fillings. My grandma was always making pies growing up and I really, really learned from her with the cream pies. She was really, really good at coconut cream pie, vanilla cream pie, banana cream pie chocolate cream pie and today i'm even going to be doing a maple cream pie and i'll even show you how i put my pies in the freezer so they're always ready whenever i want to make a pie last minute i'm going to show you how to make pie crust by hand i always use cold butter there are two ways you can prepare your butter for mixing into the flour cutting up the butter into small chunks, or you can simply grate butter with a cheese grater. Both ways work great for incorporating the butter into the crust mixture. I add two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. I mix that real good with a whisk, adding one cup of butter to the mixture. Mixing up the pie crust, you can use a pastry cutter or your hands. I'm showing you both ways here. You want to mix the butter up until you have coarse crumbs. I'm adding one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to the flour mixture. Sometimes I even splash in a little extra teaspoon into the cold water that I mix into the pie. I get asked why I do use vinegar in my pie crust. Well, to be truthful, it's because that's how I learned to make pie. However, a few years ago, I looked into why people use vinegar in pie crust. I learned that a few reasons people use vinegar for pie dough are that it helps the pie crust come out a little more tender, easier to handle, doesn't shrink after baking, keeps the dough from oxidizing and helps to brown the crust better. At this point, you can put a disc of the dough into the fridge to chill. Sometimes I do that, but most of the time I roll out the dough as soon as I make it. I actually find this easier than chilling the dough. Roll out the dough on a well floured surface. I always check if I roll out a large enough crust by holding my pie pan over the crust. Make sure there is room for overhang on the pie plate. The easiest method for moving pie crust is gently folding it in half and then quarters. Pick up and unfold into the pie pan. This greatly reduces tearing of the crust. I use my kitchen scissors or a knife to trim around the pie. I like to leave a little overhang of pie crust so when I crimp the dough, I have something to work with. I'm going to blind bake the crust. How do you blind bake a pie crust and what does it mean? Blind baking is merely pre-baking the crust without any filling, so you can fill it later with a filling that has already been cooked. I always prick holes with a fork so I don't get any air bubbles when baking. Here I'm showing you the disc of slightly chilled dough. Both crusts roll out well. Again, I'm checking my pan size. I have all different pie pan sizes, so I always check to see how big I need to roll out my crusts.
I collect these vintage pie tins because they are slightly smaller than my regular pie pans and they fit perfect into a Ziploc bag for freezing. I'm going to take all the scraps out and roll out one smaller pie crust for the freezer. Then I'll have a crust ready to bake or fill, ready at a moment's notice. I love pulling a frozen crust out of the freezer and making a quick quiche for breakfast. If there is ever a tear or a crack down your pie crust, just gently press the seams of the dough together and it will patch up nicely. Just a little bit of dough scraps left and we will save those for a little treat later on. Ready to go into the freezer. Now I'm going to show you how I make pie crust in the food processor. Same recipe, flour, salt, sugar, half a cup of cold water, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and one cup of butter into the mixer. Let it mix on high until you have a coarse crumb. I slowly pour in the water vinegar mixture and I pulse the machine by starting and stopping until it starts to come together. I like to gently form it into a ball and then I divide the dough. Sometimes if the crust is jagged or uneven around the pie pan, a trick is to fold the hangover of the crust to make the top part of the crust thicker and easier to crimp.
I like to pat out my dough into a disc shape before I start rolling out the dough. It's good to push the dough down into the pan so it's fitted. That way you won't have as much shrinkage when you bake it. I'm measuring out the parchment paper for blind baking the crust. I like to crumple it up first so it sits in the pie pan better. I add some of the beans to use as my pie weights when blind baking. Now I'm gonna use up these leftover pie scraps and make the kids some cinnamon and sugar pie treats. I brush on some melted butter and I sprinkle on some cinnamon and sugar. Bake at 375 for eight to 10 minutes or until just browned. This pie crust has been baking at 375 for 20 minutes. And now I'm gonna take out the weights and pop it back into the oven for 10 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown. Now we're gonna make some cream pies and I'm gonna start out with the chocolate cream pie recipe. I've had this on my blog for a long time, Granny's Cocoa Cream Pie. I've had lots of different comments. It does have a five-star rating. It is very chocolatey. It's very like a pudding, old-fashioned pie. And I'm gonna show you two methods today on making it, just the traditional way that I've just done, which some people, have done and it works fine. Some people like to actually use a double boiler and temper the eggs. I'm gonna show you both ways. I always just do one pan, throw everything in and stick with the pan, cook it low and slow and it always turns out. But I think it's really good to walk people through making cream pies because sometimes people just need to see what you're doing to grasp the concept and to see them all finished. And I'm even gonna put in a little tip and troubleshooting area in this video too need flour or cornstarch right here for the pie, cocoa powder, milk, sugar, egg yolks, salt, and some vanilla. That's it. That will make you a chocolate cream pie and it's delicious. And when we make the maple syrup pie, which is just a maple cream pie, it's basically the same thing minus the cocoa and adding just some maple syrup and the same ingredients and you get a delicious maple cream pie. Some great add-ons for your pie is adding peanut butter for those that like chocolate and peanut butter. 
So you can add a quarter to a half cup of peanut butter, depending on how peanut buttery you like your pie. And you just mix it in after you take it off the burner. When it's hot, you just mix it in really, really good. Whisk it really good and then put it in and let the pie chill and it's ready. Another thing you can do for a little bit more of a depth of flavor with chocolate is you, instead of using half a cup of cocoa powder, you can take some of this organic baking cocoa chocolate and you can actually do a, a ratio of a quarter cup of cocoa powder and like half a bar of this chocolate and it just kind of gives a lot of a, just an extra chocolatey flavor to it. I'm combining half a cup of flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, one cup of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt. I like to whisk those dry ingredients together real good. I add in two cups of milk, three egg yolks, and I mix together well. I start with a medium high heat to get it up to temperature until it starts thickening. Then I turn it down to a low heat, stirring and whisking the whole time. I do not step away from the pan. You have to keep stirring until it starts to feel thick. And as you see it thicken, I will often pull it off the burner and keep whisking it until it thickens up. You want a thick pudding when you are done stirring. From there, I add a chunk of butter, one tablespoon, whisk it in, and it gives the pudding a beautiful shine and richness. Next, I add in one teaspoon of vanilla paste. You can also use vanilla extract. Let cool and then chill in the fridge until you make a whipped cream topping. My biggest tip when making a cream pie with one pan thick like that is that you have to commit to staying with the pan the entire time. You cannot walk off and do some dishes or even go somewhere else. It's you cook it low and slow and you stay with that pan and you whisk the entire time and you wait until it starts to feel like it's thickening at the bottom and you just keep stirring and you do not stop and that is how you get a beautiful creamy pudding but you can't walk off or you will scorch your pan or it will turn out lumpy because once you're getting that heat and it starts going you can feel it and it starts to kind of thicken at the bottom of the pan. So you're gonna to wanna to keep stirring, stirring. And as soon as it starts coming together, you shut that heat off and then you just keep whisking it until it's nice and creamy and all together. And then you're gonna just bring it over to your counter and throw some butter and vanilla in, whisk it really good again. And you're gonna have the most creamy, delicious pudding filling. Okay, this is a double boiler. This is just a little bit more of a security for you for not scorching your pan because you're actually cooking it with the heat of the water. So you're gonna put water in this pan, you're gonna put this down, you're gonna put it over the burner, you're gonna turn it on a medium high heat and that steam from that 
water is going to be cooking so you're going to have a little bit more of a just a safeguard there so you don't have to worry about the pan scorching as easily and you can just sit there and you can stir it until it's nice and creamy and we're going to temper the eggs too some people like to temper the eggs because they say that um you know it can cause like scrambled egg um, effect in your pudding but really it doesn't if you're whisking it the whole time um, but this still it's a good safeguard that's what i would call it more of a foolproof way of doing it and let's go make some pie filling in this double boiler This is the same chocolate cream pie recipe. I find this double boiler method takes much longer, about 20 to 30 minutes, than doing the one pot method, which takes about 10 minutes. Both work, it's up to you. For me, it's a little too time consuming. I prefer and use the first method for all my cream pies, and I have done so for years. Now we're going to make a maple cream pie, which is super simple. The ingredients are milk, egg yolks, butter, flour, salt, and maple syrup. And if you want it a little bit more mapley, you can add maple extract, but I'm not going to use that today. I'm just going to go off the taste of this maple syrup. We just got done making three cream pies and I thought, let's make a coconut banana cream pie. I think that will just be really fun. Same ingredients, just minus the cocoa. You are essentially just making a vanilla cream base that we add coconut and bananas to. One to one and a half cups of coconut. I used roughly a cup because I'm also adding bananas to the bottom of the pie crust. I like to slice the banana and lay on the bottom of the baked pie crust and then add the coconut cream filling to it. I'm going to make some whipped cream for the top of this pie.
I'm just going to grate a little bit of chocolate for a pretty topping. Cream pies are such an old fashioned staple that many farmhouse wives made from the extra dairy and eggs on the farm. For my great grandma, this was a staple dessert. When we made the pie crust earlier today, you saw that I slipped one of these into a bag, threw it in the freezer. This is just raw dough and it's ready to put right into the oven and you can make any kind of filling to put in that. So you would just grab your pie weights, put them right in, bake it at the temperature that's on the blog and then you will have a perfect pie crust ready for your filling. This is a smaller pie pan, but I like this size because it fits in the Ziploc. I collect these like older um, Cyrus O'Leary type metal pans, or sometimes I'll find vintage ones. You can even find tinfoil ones. I prefer to use a more of a vintage pie pan, but they fit perfect in a Ziploc bag. And then you can just pull them out. You can use them for quiche. You can use them for cream pies. You can use them for anything. But if you have a bigger pan that you want to freeze the dough so it's all ready for Easter or the night before, then all you need to do is just put some baker's paper or parchment paper in between each pie, put it in the freezer, and it's gonna be okay for a week even that way. It's not gonna get ruined or anything if it's just covered with just parchment. A couple days to a week, I have no problem leaving a crust just kind of stacked in the freezer. It's not gonna get freezer burn and it will still work great for making your pie. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today making pies. I hope you guys learned a little bit about cream pies or pie crust. I would love to see your guys' pies. Please tag me if you guys are on Instagram. I would love to see your guys' pies that you've made.